Hello and welcome to another tutorial from MoICT. In this tutorial, we're going to be making a scary maze game uh, using Windows Form and C Sharp. Okay, let's just take a look at what this game does. Uh, if you haven't heard about uh, the game, this game before, then I'll just show you a quick clip of this one. So this was the original game, the way it was made. Right, it was supposed to be like a prank game. Okay, so basically uh, what would happen is you will start the game and you'll have to get your mouse to follow the path along and as the path goes um, up, it gets narrower and narrower so you'll have to use more concentration to get there. But when it gets to the end or near the end, um, it does like a jump scare with the sound, with the screaming sound and at that point I think that there was a movie that was quite popular so they used to use that still from that movie. Okay, so we're going to try to recreate this one, um, but in the um, in the case of uh, keeping it simplified, we made a very simple maze. And then let me just show you how this works. So I'm just going to click on start. So you can hear the little um, background sound playing, right? And the boxes are currently black, so I have to click on the start button to get started. When I do that, it turns to oh, it turns to blue, right? And then I can move the mouse cursor along the way. If I leave the path, it goes back to black, then I have to start it again. And if I click on it, it also resets, so I have to basically get started again. And the click one is uh, just to stop the players from cheating, and sometimes you can hold the left click and then move it over to the end and still get the result, right? But we want them to sort of start concentrating as they're going upwards. So let's move the mouse cursor up. Okay, just a bit of a warning, this might uh, have a little of a, bit of a jump scare, so let's just go ahead. And... <laughs> okay, uh, so we've got the um, cat-like red eyes and a black background and it basically does a full screen on the window uh, with the button there just to close this because otherwise people, you know, um, if somebody the basic uh, computer user, they will know the Alt F4 shortcut. So it's just to uh, have a bit of a usability to close it and then start again. Okay, so uh, this should be a fun tutorial to do um, in Visual Studio. So let's get started by creating a new project. Okay, so this is the Visual Studio project window. Um, before we start, uh, make sure you download the game assets from MoICT website. You'll have the scary eyes, the scary WAV file, background music WAV file, and a background image uh, to import to the project. Okay, so we need all of these to make this game work. So once you've got it all um, set up, I'll show you how to import into the project. So let's go ahead and create a new project first. I want to pick the Windows Form.net app, which is fine. Call this one Scary Maze Game More ICT. Click Next. .NET 6 is fine. So here's the empty project window. So to get started, let's create and do the text for this one. So Scary Maze Game More ICT. And then I'm going to set the um, size of this one to 800 by. 800 because okay, so it may be a little bit bigger than the window. I'm just going to minimize this so I can see more from here. Okay, and then I'm going to add the background image. So in the properties window, I'll find the background image option. While the project resource file option is selected, click import, and then we're going to import both of these images. And let's set this one to background here. And then from tile, I'm going to set it to stretch. So it looks like a long, creepy road. Okay. Now to import the sound files as WAVs, um, after you import the background image, you'll notice that the, uh, under the dependencies on the uh, Solutions Explorer, there's an option comes up now, Properties. And then now we can right click on the resources. So yours might be hiding inside the properties like so. so just right click on the resources one here. And then you can go ahead and find the, yep, go ahead and open the window where you both of the WAV files are and we can just drag and drop them inside the resources. So that way they get added to the audio section of the resources. So the pictures are still there. So if I go to the images option, I can still find the two images that are there. And then I can also go ahead and find the two sound files there as well. So what this does is it embeds the assets to the exe file, which is the executable file that is created by Visual Studio to run this kind of application. And this way we don't need it to be external because these files are relatively small 
uh, but if you have multiple files it's usually a good practice to have it somewhere where it's externally loaded in instead of affecting the overall performance of the application because in this case we only have four files so the file size won't be that large but if you have more than let's say four files then you might need to think about how to externally load them instead of internally loading them into the resources and so now with that being done uh, let's go ahead and then add our components so first i'm going to just add a picture box here Uh, this one's going to have the start button, so I'll just make it slightly larger and then you can copy and paste the same picture box and start working on the maze. Okay, so just make sure they are connected together. Don't leave a gap inside. So uh, the way the game is going to work is while the mouse is on top of these, it's going to be safe for the mouse to travel across to wherever it needs to go. But we will put a event to the form where if the mouse enters the form then the game is over which means that you have gone past that boundary okay so i'm just going to make this one larger like so run with but uh, you can always change these around to make it in any shape that you want as long as it's like a following a path through so just make sure that they are connected with each other so just to stay true to the original game i'm going to make this one red color here so i'm going to get to the end i'm going to call this one final btn Final BTN is fine. So and then we can also put a little bit of a tag into it here. Final button. Like so. So just put a tag there. Uh, after the name, just put a tag to the final one. Okay. So now let's go ahead and add a button here. The button is going to be for start so we start the game through here okay so now let's add the events that we need uh, so one of the events we're going to need here for the, obviously going to be for the click so say um, start button event okay uh, that's for the button here if I click on the form and add a event here for mouse enter Mouse enter here to say uh, for mouse event. Okay, and what you also can do is the same event will also work with mouse hover, so we can also link the same one to mouse hover as well. So both of these events will trigger this part here. Okay. And anything else we need, we can add it through the code. Actually, before we move on, uh, we need a mass enter event for the final button. So this one can have a mass enter here. To say uh, show screen window. Okay. So we have the events for the form, event for the window, and event for that one. And these, the event for these multiple picture boxes can be added through uh, when we get to the coding part. Inside the code after the three events, we're going to add two more functions here. The first one's going to be for start game. So we'll have all the logic for when how to start the game. Private void. And then another one for private void, we'll call it end game. So what will happen when the game ends? Okay, so right at the top, let's add our sound players. Before we do that, I think we might import the namespace. So, using system to media. So if you add that, you'll have access to the sound player. So like so. So we're gonna call this one sound player and another one sound player called uh, scare. 
we can instantiate them here as well if you want to actually. Because this window will not close, so it should be fine. Okay, so with the both sign players added, those are the technically the variables that we actually need. The two instances of the sign player, one's gonna be playing the background sound and one gonna be for the scare sound. Let's go ahead and put our logic into the start game function. Okay, um, did we name this button here? We can call this one start button. Like so, so it's a bit easier to call it from here. So start button dot enabled is equals to false. So when the start game is um, running, we want the start button to be disabled. So player dot stream equals to properties dot resources dot bg music. So that's the stream. That's the file that we want to stream on the sound player, right? And then uh, we can also say scare.stream instead of bg music, this one can be scare. Okay, and then player.play looping. So we want this to be a continuous sound playing in the background. So after these lines, we're going to do a for each loop. Inside of this loop, we're going to say control uh, x in this controls. And in here, what we need to say is x enabled is equals to true. So we're going to re-enable the picture boxes and x dot uh, mouse down is going to be plus equals to. So plus equals to basically means we're adding an event to these picture boxes, right? And as you can see, the picture, uh, event gets added here called x underscore down, right? So I just have to write uh, plus equals and then Visual Studio recommended I press tab double tab to add the event and because we also need that need this event so that way we actually have this event here so this is going to be to stop the players from cheating in the game so you know if they need to um, click down and then drag their mouse up to the end they can't do that when we will be able to run the end game function here okay so now with these things done uh, because we set this picture box here uh, we actually called it a button I think it's fine uh, uh, this picture box here has a tag called uh, final button right and uh, what we want to do is everything else other than this picture box we want to ch say uh, change the color to blue but this one we want to keep it red so what we can do here is say now this is going through all of them right and actually we need to make sure it's just doing it to the picture boxes Okay, so I'm just going to move these two lines inside. Okay, so if X is a picture box, enable it and add the event to it, right? Otherwise, it was going to add it to all of them. And we also need to say inside of this one, inside of this, we can say if X dot tag is equals equals null, right? which means uh, those picture boxes that doesn't have a tag, we can say X dot back color is equals to color dot light blue. Okay, so we just change the colors of those that don't have um, a tag okay so I'm just gonna copy the name of this one here and if I just put it inside the start window there window event and then let's just go back here and run the game so for now, if I click on start, you can see that all of their colors changed except for this one here. Okay, and obviously once I click on something, it just breaks the game because it has a throw on implementation exception here. But I'll just delete that line for now. And then we can add our implementation to it in a minute. So let's do the end game function. So the end game function is gonna have a similar for each loop like so. So I'm just gonna copy this one here and I'm going to move it inside of this one. So X control, and this time it's going to be, I can delete that line from here. So we don't need to add another event. And then uh, it's going to be false. So we're going to disable all of the picture boxes there. And anything that doesn't have a tag, we're going to change its color to black. Okay. 
So this one here is basically just going to set everything uh, for us in a way where we can retry the game again. So right at the beginning here, we're going to say start button dot enable is equals to true. So the button can be clicked again. So once we start the game, it disables, but when the game ends, we want to be able to play again. Okay. And lastly, uh, so for those ones, we want to end the game for, so like the form uh, event, so we can just run the end game function inside of this one. And we can also run the end game function inside of the XML stand one. So this is the plus of creating a separate function, so you can be called over and over again with the rewriting all the instructions inside of it. Okay, so let's try to run this one now and let's see if that works. So I click start. I exit, it ends the game. I click start again and I click, it also ends the game. Okay, sound seems to be playing okay. Nice, okay. Okay, so now let's do the jump scare bit. So we're going to show the scale window, but we need to create the scale window first um, to be part of this. So if we go to this, back to the solutions explorer, click on the name of the project right here. Now I'm just going to right click here and say add new form windows form. I'm going to call this one scale window and then press enter. I uh, actually don't need the project manifest, that's fine. Um, this is fine like this. I'm going to change the back color of this one to black and then background image we're going to apply the scary eyes one to it and it to be stretched image okay and obviously this is going to be full screen when it actually loads up so you don't have to worry about the size and another thing we're going to need is a button just to put it here to say close Okay, so it's just going to close window, and then if I go and add an event called close window event to the button. So this if, uh, this, this side of the script is separate from this side of the script, but this side is linked to the form one, and all of these are linked to the scale window one. So they are completely separate classes. Okay, and then as the window loads, we also want it to... Um, set up another function let's just call it load window okay so inside the load window part what we can do here you can say this the window state equals to um, form window state dot normal for us is fine uh, this form border style is going to be equals to form border style and then none so we don't want any border whatsoever. This stop bound, bounds uh, equals to screen dot primary screen dot bounds. So it's going to basically calculate the height and width of this primary screen here, and then it will just fill it up to that level. Okay, so I'm going to close this one now, and oh, I need to do need to do this uh, event here. Then this one just going to say this dot height. So when the button's clicked, we just want to be able to hide this window. This window is now done. We can now go ahead and add the final bit here. What we're going to do here is uh, say scale window. No. Scale window equals new scale window. Right? And then let's just say scale window dot show. Okay, and I'm going to stop the player from playing the background music and we want the scream to play. I was scared to play now scream, sorry. Okay, we want to play the scare sound. Okay, remember this is the mouse enter event that's referenced to the last picture box. So the final button does have a reference to it. And then this one here is basically for the mouse enter. So whenever the mouse enters the picture box, this is what's going to happen. But if the picture box is disabled, obviously it's not going to do anything. Okay, let's test it out. So right now, as you can see, if I enable it, I 
can move over but when it's disabled even if I move the mouse over there nothing's going to happen because right now that section there is disabled so it's not going to trigger an event okay once again a little bit warning on the jump scare bit Okay, so it did come up, but it came up in the uh, small bit. So let's see if I can close this one down. I don't know what happened. Um, yeah, I created the function, but I didn't link it to the part here. So I copied that. Wrong. Okay, so now that I'm running the function there, that should just set up the window when it loads up. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, so as you can see, the window is actually perfectly encapsulates everything inside of it and it kind of hides everything behind it actually. And it looks kind of creepy, but yeah, I mean, you can use um, any type of maze um, if you want. Uh, you can also set it so you know half of the maze is visible, half of the maze is invisible. As you progress to the other part, you can make the other picture boxes visible, and you can separate them out with tags and such. So hopefully this was a fun tutorial for you to follow, and I will see you on the next one.